sins are forgiven, my son. I thought only God could do that. I've had reports of the young prophet of Nazareth. Your hunger for righteousness will be filled through me. One of you here will betray me to my enemies. I want someone to tell me. Jesus of Nazareth, you are charged with blasphemy. Tell us, are you the Son of God? I am coming soon. Yes, February 28th, that movie comes out. I'm looking forward to it. Well, earlier this week, I had a chance to do an interview with the people behind it, Mark Burnett and Roma Downey, married couple who brought you the Bible, the miniseries, now this movie. Enjoy. Mark Burnett, Roma Downey, thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope you're enjoying yourself in, in Toronto doing publicity for the movie. Oh, yes, yeah, great to be here. Lovely, lovely day here. Fresh snow. <laughs> now, uh, Roma, if I had said to people that didn't know uh, the Bible miniseries that you and Mark produced last year, and I said to them, Roma Downey's going to be in a religious movie, they might say, you know, based on Touched by an Angel, yeah, that makes sense, I can see that, but Mark, you're primarily still known for Survivor, The Apprentice, The Voice, which is just doing gangbusters right now. How did you end up producing not one but two projects like this? Well, you know, first of all, it was a calling for us. You know, five years ago, I guess, um, Rome and I talked about doing a Bible miniseries. Um, and we just knew it was the right thing to do and decided it was the right time in our lives that we had some success behind us and would get a chance to actually put this on the screen. Of course, many, many people told us, you guys are crazy for two reasons. Number one, you're married and there's no way a married <laughs> couple could go through this sort of five years together. But we are best friends and our marriage is better than ever as is our friendship. And secondly, come on guys, you may be really good at making TV, but nobody's watching the Bible in prime time in America or Canada. Obviously, they were really wrong again. So it all worked out. Over 100 million North Americans watched the Bible miniseries. And uh, now we have this feature film coming out on February 28th, and we're really excited. Uh, Roma, you told our friend Billy Hallowell from The Blaze that you want people coming out of this movie to have a, a spiritual impact. Is this more than a movie for you? Absolutely it is. Um, it was such a privilege to be able to use our resources and our talents and our, our strengths to bring this feature film about the life of Jesus to the big screen. Jesus' story hasn't been on the screen for 10 years since Passion of the Christ, and his whole life story hasn't been seen since the greatest story ever told, which is almost 50 years ago. So wow. for a whole new generation, there's an opportunity to see and to feel uh, the story of our Lord and Savior on the big screen. I absolutely hope and pray that people come and they fall in love with Jesus all over again. Now, I remember watching an interview that you did, Roma, around the time of um, the Bible miniseries coming out saying similar things about the special effects in the Ten Commandments, the Charlton Heston version, that they were dated, they need to be updated. And you did a great job on that. But for those of us that watched the miniseries, and my whole family sat down, we watched it together, we, we, we bought the DVD as soon as it came out. What are we going to see that's different in this? Because I know it's not just all the same material, but there is some similar. We'll see something different, though? Yes, the, yes, there's loads of new material, re-editing of uh, existing material. Mm -hmm. When we were in Morocco filming the series, and the Jesus narrative started to unfold. We had an editor there with us, so we were able to see it as we were going along. And as we started seeing the Jesus portion come to life on the screen, I said to Mark, well, I wish we were making this as a film. This really deserves to have a screening as a big, a big presentation. It's Jesus and he should be felt on the big screen. The scenes are amazing. The music, when you hear it in surround sound, is extraordinary. But I think most importantly, it's the experience of seeing mm -hmm. it in community, yeah. of sitting there with other people. You know, so often when we watch alone in our TV or on our laptops or however we're watching at home, it's different. But to be there and to see it and feel it on the big screen, it's it's 
it's a completely different experience. You know, we've also seen that we've now done about 20 screenings, I think. Um, people are sitting there after the credits in small groups talking about it. It's absolutely amazing. Then you come out of there and in the, in the lobby of the movie theatres, there's groups standing around talking. It's really affecting people. There was one screening recently in Los Angeles where a pastor, after the movie, said, does anybody here feel they're called to Christ? And 40 people came forward wow. after the screening. Absolutely amazing what's yeah, happening. It, it, we just knew this should be on the big screen. And I'm so glad, because we moved ahead and did this before we had any clue if it would even be in the movie theaters. For all we knew, we made this movie and Roma and I put it into one theater and we're just happy that it was Listen, on the big screen. Uh, we know it's a God thing. Yes. Only God could take something that started its life in one form as a, as a TV experience. And now it's a big screen experience. And not just some rinky-dink distribution, but 20th Century Fox yes. Studios yeah. have stepped up to distribute it in 3,000 theaters across the country. And, it's and then that's out, February 28th for people that want to see it. February, February 28th. 28th. So okay. we just are so encouraged that um, that people are going to you know to come out, and maybe bring a friend. It's harder sometimes to ask somebody to go to church, mm -hmm. but easy to ask somebody to go to the movies with you. And also, we should mention on the same day, February 28th, it's available in Spanish. We've had the Spanish dub done with top Mexican actors. And we also are now just paid to have a Korean subtitled version done to make it also available February 28th for the Korean communities if they want those theaters. Wherever the demand is, 20th Century Fox have agreed to put that movie. So it's absolutely amazing that this has come from just a, a feeling this should be on the big screen to it really happening. Uh that, that is incredible, and I want to ask you, though, because Hollywood often has the knock against it. They're, well, they're anti-religious. They don't take people of faith seriously. Um, they're actually antagonistic to people of faith. Is that wrong? Or well, do, are we off the not, mark? You know, it hasn't been our experience, so I feel that people are often asking us of if there are many Christians in Hollywood. We have met so many believers in Hollywood. And I think that as we've had the privilege of going across the country, letting people know about this movie, anytime you turn the news on, you think it was just bad people doing bad things. I am happy to report that there are good people everywhere doing good things mm -hmm. and spreading the good news. And, and that's what we hope this will be. Maybe just one small part of it, but it's a good resource for the good news. And and, um, you know, we really hope that people will, will come out and share Son of God when it opens in theaters February 28th. I'll just say, I think there are a lot of Christians in Hollywood. There may be, prior to this, they just haven't been that noisy about it, you know. And I think the, the Bible series and now Son of God are giving people a, a conversation piece. And it, uh, what's great is conversations have started. You've both worked with some of the biggest uh, names in Hollywood in your various projects, in your different careers. You've come together on this. It's not a star-studded cast, uh, yourself aside, Roman. It's not a star-studded cast, but it was, it, if you, you're working with the same people as the miniseries, it was a fantastic cast. How, is, how different was it working with big name stars versus the great actors that you were able to put together for this? Well, I think that we have a beautiful, we gathered a beautiful, amazing international cast uh, for the film led by the wonderful Diogo Morgado in the central role of Jesus. Diogo's a Portuguese actor. English is his third language, Portuguese and Spanish being number one and two. And he brought to the role the qualities that we were looking for of, of being able to portray the lion and the lamb. He's strong and gentle. And I think that, um, that his performance is truly magnetic and charismatic in the central role. In other uh, main supporting roles, Greg Hicks and Adrian Schuller as Pilate and Caiaphas are amazing theater actors out of the British theater system. Uh, Darwin Shaw 
uh, leading as the uh, a disciple Peter. We wanted to cast a group of um, dynamic uh, young followers uh, so that the characters would be relatable to an audience. And I think there's some value, really, that there aren't any big stars in that sometimes you can get distracted yeah. by the stardom of somebody. And I think in this case, it allows you to project onto the story, um, you know, the, the, your, your beliefs and everything that you might have felt about scripture. You, you can just see it in this really wonderful cast. My wife said to me after watching the, uh, we were in the middle actually of watching probably the first or second night of the Jesus narrative in the miniseries, and she said, that's what I've always thought Jesus was like. So you hit the nail on the head. As far as my wife is concerned, I, I couldn't disagree with her. That'd be bad for me. But let me ask you this, Roma. Playing the mother of God on screen, what was that like? That must have been something incredibly special for you. Yeah, it was profoundly moving for me. You know, I have loved um, Mary. I have loved her son my whole life. And I have looked at... Um, across different times my whole life and I've always imagined what Jesus did for us and, and what he must have been feeling but I'd never fully considered what his mother must have been feeling and I am a mother myself mm -hmm. so all I could do was to bring a mother's heart to those scenes. There isn't a whole lot of dialogue for the role of Mary. Much of it is played out in unspoken, um, unspoken looks between a mother and a son. And sometimes I think silence speaks louder than words. But the scenes, certainly at the foot of the cross, uh, were amongst the most moving scenes that I've ever had to film because Mary was the mother of the Son of God, but she was also the mother of a son. Yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful work. Thank you both so much for it. I'm looking forward to this coming up February 28th. And Thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you. We appreciate talking to you.